Hey, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Force 5. Ken Plume here, and this is the show where I have a special guest on, and we talk about their top five Star Wars action figures in their collection across any era, across any scale. And for this episode, my very special guest is uh, just a, a legendary musician, uh, personality, provocateur, raconteur, uh registrar i don't know i'm just throwing out additional things whatever tony thaxton <laughs> thank you for coming on the show thank you for having me it is How my do you pleasure like to, be to describe here. yourself uh just, i'm just a guy you do fun so man much. i'm just a guy i yeah i do a lot of different things i, I dip my toes in lots of different uh ponds i don't know uh <laughs> and <laughs> Yeah, so I, I don't need to know. work on titles. You need to work on metaphors. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, hey, I never, I never called myself a metaphor master. A, a metaphor, uh, I yes. think, is the other term that you also <laughs> apply. Uh, yeah. Well, you just also speaking of uh, things that you do, you just came off a tour again recently, right? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, yeah, because I think we were trying to do this sooner, and then I was uh, I was gone for quite a while. Yeah, I uh, played a band called Motion City Soundtrack, play drums, and uh, you know where we uh, that was my life for a very long time, and uh, now we're uh, just you know we're all old now, and now we're just kind of a sometimes band. So uh, <laughs> you know, and then obviously the last couple of years made us a not at all band. Uh, so it was nice to finally get back out on the road and play some shows. It was good. It was good for the soul. And, well, how does it uh, feel to get to that sort of era of being in a group when it comes down to conversations of when we can get it on the calendar? Is that pretty much what it is? Like, well, when are you free? Well, uh, this is what the time span that I'd like to do it. But what are you doing during this time? I think it's it's uh it's usually planned out so far in advance that like you know you just you then work around that you know <laughs> it's it's like like yeah I think well first of all anything going that, for twenty twenty four right now can we can we lock in twenty twenty four I mean that probably will be the talk soon honestly um <laughs> yeah because because you know and then even even more so than that like these last couple of years made it so weird because we you know kept that we were out a uh, for our second record and uh the it was initially supposed to be a 15 year anniversary tour but then that got pushed back two years so we ended up doing you know the famous 17th anniversary that we all celebrate yeah well you know yeah. what it, everything is unprecedented until the precedent set so from now yeah. on every band should celebrate their 17th anniversary yeah that's the biggie it takes the pressure off because then you could say, hey, we made it past 15. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it was just yeah, so that and then and then even that like got scheduled. OK, I guess this is going to be 17 years now. And then that was supposed to happen in January. Like we were literally going to kick off uh, 2022 years Eve in Chicago. And then we go on tour straight from there. And uh then the day of the first show, our uh, our singer tested positive for COVID, and then over the next few days, four of the five of us did. <laughs> the entire tour had to get postponed, but we and finally got pushed to June, and we finally got through it. June and July, and then a little bit of September, we did as well, and it was great. I'm. But there's uh, no better sign that you're still a cohesive group, that you will all get sick together. <laughs> Exactly. Yes, I was still. I question uh, the one guy who didn't get it, though. I question his commitment. But I uh, think you should. I think it yeah. should be long running. Now you should always look askance at him yeah. anytime you go out. Mm hmm. Yeah. I got my where, eye on where you, Josh were you King. when we got COVID? <laughs> 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 who were you playing with? <laughs> <laughs> so how was it going back out? I mean, did it feel different going back out on the road? Uh, yes and no. Like it, mostly, like the shows themselves felt pretty much the same, except for with the exception of maybe looking out and seeing a fair amount. Of Not everybody, for sure, but uh, you know, still saw a good amount of them out there. We encouraged the mask wearing at the shows. Um, the biggest difference for us, this really wouldn't affect the audience. Really, us, the biggest difference was because we were like we have to do this. We can't like risk this getting canceled again. Um, so we weren't, we were being very strict about backstage. Like we weren't allowing anybody back. It was like the, somebody's wife or kid thing. Um, 
which you know normally like all kinds of friends coming and right. all this so, you, and... so you're saying no matter how much alex and molly damon were banging <laughs> on the stage door they just weren't getting backstage <laughs> i did have i did have dinner with them on a day off so we, we sat outside and had a had a nice dinner but uh alex yeah with his little autograph book <laughs> <laughs> they're they're just the nicest it was uh it's fun i i i had i had be it was it was very fun because i had become a fan of their uh youtube channel and was watching it and i don't remember how i, didn't, I just like tweeted something or, the, or they saw that i followed and then alex messaged me saying he was a big fan of the band and i had no idea and now it's just that's a, that's a fun thing that happens from time to time you well, become a fan of something moments. Yeah, you you're a fan and have no idea that they're a fan, so it's it's fun. Well, the well, speaking of being a fan, we'll get into a bit of the discussion about sort of your Star Wars fandom or just collecting in general. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what the first sort of toy line as a kid that really sort of got your attention was? It was for sure Star Wars. Um, so I I was born in '78, so I came just barely after it started, and uh. You know, it's one of those things that, like, I literally, I don't remember getting into it. I just always was. Like, I have no memory of it not being this huge part of my life. Because, like, I can even still remember, being, like, five years old. And, like, I, <laughs> a specific memory I have is uh, seeing lots And, like, first of all, not having any memory of getting them. Just, like, I just had all these toys. And, <laughs> like, I can remember specifically once looking at my dengar figure and uh i don't know if this point i just it had been a while since i'd seen empire or i think probably too it was like maybe hbo or whatever was showing it back then and dengar would be chopped out of the that shot yeah so like no you context, don't a no context figure yeah so i was just like I being convinced that it wasn't i was like is this even a star wars figure that's in with my star wars figures but like <laughs> is this like a weird like yeah, joe that I, like i don't know what so it was a weird adventure person that somehow slipped through <laughs> yeah like i legitimately didn't it wasn't until like years and years later when they uh put out like letterbox versions uh that a friend of mine had that i saw i was like that's the guy you know, because this was so, this was so still it, like early days of the internet at that point. So, in the the grand discussion of how detrimental pan and scan was to film presentation, nobody thinks about Dengar. <laughs> exactly. And what pan and, and scan did to Dengar? Yeah, and I believe ID88 as well, and maybe it may be the others. But I specifically remember Dengar and, and IG88 not being able to really be seen in those, at least in the close-ups. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it pretty much sums up Dengar's sort of whole bounty hunter lot doesn't it to sort of be the also ran of the bounty hunters yeah i i uh i will say though too that i think it was not a thing i realized until much later in life uh that uh and i feel like no one really mentions this is that he is in jabba's palace numerous times yeah uh and i only only just recently spotted that myself I was like oh wait what that's what amazes me about that scene, and that scene's going to come up a lot today. I'm just going to tell you that right now. Uh, is I've uh, that is the the probably my favorite because I Jedi holds a special place for me. That's the one that I can remember seeing in the, as a kid. Um, so that yeah. one is just when always conscious memories starting to form. Yes, so that one's that one's always like a very special one for me, and particularly the Jabba scene. I I love uh, Jabba's palace scene. And still to this day, I can't tell you how many times I've watched it, and especially probably that scene more than anything else. I can still watch that and find things I've never noticed before. I'm amazed at how I'm still finding things. <laughs> Do you own every single one of the Jabba's Palace denizens? Uh, I have a lot of them. Uh, so I've I've had a uh, my my collecting has kind of gone through these phases. So you had the uh, toys where, as a kid, so you just you know they yes. were just there. You had yes. them. I had them. I mean, yeah, some of them were just there that I don't have a memory of, and then there are plenty that I do have a memory of getting them. Um, and then had those, and then there was a point. I forget how old I was, but there was a point that my family had a yard sale, <laughs> and it was right in this little zone of my life where. I would like hit this point of like, I'm too old for toys. I don't need toys. And so I literally sold 
all of my Star Wars. And I had, I'm not going to say I had all of the original 96 or whatever it was, uh, but pretty, pretty close. Like, <laughs> I, I would say definitely in uh, probably like 80 something of them. Like, I had most of them. And it all Didn't went it? for $5. Oh, probably probably cheaper than that. This was probably Just 1988 or something. Yeah. And uh, and it was exciting at the time because I was like, oh, I made all this money because my parents let me keep the money of the things I sold. And that was really thing. And then, you know, cut so to what like. What uh, other toys went on that shopping block? What else were you into? Because you would have really come of age toy wise in the late 80s. Uh, so that would have been what was there the Ninja Turtle era, real Ghostbusters. Um, a little bit of real Ghostbusters. Honestly, like Star Wars was always the biggest one for me. Um, the closest thing, and I had a few uh, Transformers and even some GoBots. Um, we, we all got GoBots from family members who just didn't understand. <laughs> yes, but I, the thing that was the closest thing to uh, replacing, not replacing, but you know getting as as many toys uh was mask which has not exactly had the staying power but uh but yeah that was that was a big one for me that was that was the 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 thing after that i was uh into the most but it even had vehicles but, it had some sci-fi yeah. elements to it mm -hmm. yeah and i just remember it being fun but still i i've have looked up a few things you here and there right it's like most of it like i just it hasn't stuck. I know it hasn't stuck with most of the public, but like specific things, I don't, I really don't remember a lot of specifics. I remember being into it. Weird how like it must have just, you know, time moves so differently when you're a kid. But we also and, had like, so much media, yeah. even then being thrown at us as far yeah. as, and it was all toy centric in that era. Right. Which yeah. it really isn't today. Yeah. I actually haven't looked up how long Mask was actually on. There's been so many shows like that that I looked up as an adult. I felt like I watched it for years and years as a kid. I'm like, oh, that ran for six episodes, or, yeah. you know, and it because <laughs> time just moves so weird when you're a kid. But if it was a Saturday morning cartoon, those six episodes could be stretched over the entirety of the season, even though it got yeah. canceled. Yep. So you just yeah. saw those six episodes again and again. Mm -hmm. How many and of those cool thirteen ghosts did Scooby Doo actually recapture? <laughs> <laughs> So Ridley was never. I know. I know that was a joke, but I'm just gonna add. Never got into Scooby Doo. I don't know what it was. It just never, never did it for me. So what was your then? What was your average Saturday morning? What were the things you look forward to? Uh, definitely would watch some Smurfs. Uh, I did have a lot of Smurf toys also. The um, just those little uh, guys. I feel like I'd get a lot of them at Spencer's Gifts. Uh, had a lot of that. Um. And then I remember the Snorks. I was in Gummy Bears. Yes, um, Snorks. Yeah. The we want to do the Smurfs and stop play, <laughs> paying the payo estate. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, those and uh, uh, and I did watch the. Uh, they were short lived, but I did watch Ewoks and droids and stuff at the time. Um, but yeah, and actually, this is one of the little uh, bone here. I do still have this guy. I forget his actual name, what? but from droids. <laughs> I tried to I looked it up earlier so that I could be impressive to name, and I don't remember his name. But was that this, your? Was that? But that is a a rebuy of one you had. To no, this or? is so. I'll 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 get more this later. But uh, when so I grew up in Michigan originally, a small town in Michigan, and when I was starting high school, right before high school, uh, my family moved to just outside of Richmond, Virginia. And when we were moving, there were a couple of toys that had kind of accidentally survived and like found in drawers. And the Great Purge. Yes, and and uh, this this dude from this alien from Droids was was one of those. When you realized it had survived the yard sale, were you delighted that one I was. still made it through? I actually was. Yeah. And and funny enough, uh, all the uh, the Droids figures all came with those uh, like gold coins, and. I didn't have the coin for this guy still, but I do have the coin for another guy. And I do remember his name. I, I forget if it's actually how you say it, but it was Jobin who had like a half a head of hair. Um, yeah. I think he was so, one of the leads. Right? I think the, so. Yeah. Yeah. In that yeah. First season. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, have, have his coin and I have the other guy's figure. 
have you to this day have you tried to complete the set since then i i have definitely i've been intrigued by want i want the r2 i think it's really cool looking it's just like a different kind of color scheme on him and it definitely doesn't look like the normal r2 toy um but those are they're very they're pretty pricey and uh they're pretty hard to find and when i've found one they are way more than i would care i mean to pay if you for just it. like the color scheme you can get that recent <laughs> anniversary release of it in that color scheme the are you talking about the jumbo the, one the, no no the target re-release of the droid See, figure it comes with the coin i know but look uh, compare the uh, compare the 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 new one the target one looks nothing like that old one no it looks like a modern figure yeah yeah but no. like even even the color scheme i feel like is more like your traditional r2 he's just a little more cartoony looking this other one has like uh, some red on him and yeah it's... yeah this the modern is a pastel he's a pastel they did make too. they did make the jumbo version of it and that looks like the original one, and We've that's also tempted me over 20 years of ebay for you to track these things down i know i know <laughs> <laughs> So let's let's start with your list. Let's do your. All so right. was it was it difficult for you to rank them? <sighs> kind of, uh, yeah. I mean, it was it was it was a little bit difficult to to pick in general. Some were kind of no brainers for me, and some were like, yeah, I could see this, but I could see this, and yeah. No, um, I'll be honest with you, I'm still kind of toying with the ranking as we do this. So you're gonna get a <laughs> so, like a well, we're lock somewhat of a live ranking, yeah. Well, we're taking one and locking it in place. <laughs> so what is your number five on your list? Number five, and this is kind of the oddball of the set. Um, it's it's the only larger figure that I'm gonna go with, and it's pretty new. Well, uh, figuring Dan here, because uh, this was this was something uh, I, I don't a lot of the like larger black series thing actually i think this is the only one i have um but i am a being a musician i'm a sucker for any sort of uh if if it's if it's something i'm into and then there's like a band that's involved in that thing like so like <laughs> i i will always get those toys so like i i remember as a kid being bummed that there was no and toys i didn't know his name at the time but uh I always uh, was like, yeah, why don't they make uh, why don't they make the band from the cantina? And uh, and then in the '90s when they started doing those toys in uh, in the '90s, they I believe it was a mail order thing the first time. But I also yes I for the power of the force too. yes it was a mail order to yeah so and, I had that they sent you uh, the figure and a whole pack of instruments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, only have, one figure though. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then they did. Yeah, they've done some other ones since then. Like there was one that came in that like tin collect that's like five figures or whatever with the different instruments. I have those as well. But um, yeah, and I know they just put out a, like a carded figure of him now, too, which I think is the first time they've done that. It is the first time. Yeah. And I haven't gotten that I, yet, but I do I need think, to get he's that. Always been the because the other ones were multi packs. Yeah. To the best of my knowledge. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I, I'm just always a sucker for the. Uh, but are you gonna get the whole band? Are you gonna get the whole display? I, I did see they have an, a new one for pre-order right now that has seven band members. In the uh, yeah, the three and three quarter scale that has like your yeah. complete sort of troop builder, but a band. Yeah. Yes, it's definitely tempting me right now. Like I said, I have the <laughs> I have the five piece one, but and I'm like, and I honestly got that not all that long ago. I just got this one and now they're doing this. So um because I'm definitely not again, my, my collecting has kind of gone in and out as because what I was saying, I got rid of those original toys and like a like a year maybe after that yard sale, I was like, oh man, why did I do that? And I was I was really bummed that I got rid of all those. Um and then like in the nineties, I was in high school at, the, at that point and they were doing those, the Hasbro toys. And I, I got very much into collecting all those. So you were, and they really got you with the power of the force Two line in 95. They did. Yeah. I mean, they, they, with the originals too, but, uh, these like hit me at that right time where I, was, uh, just like, Oh, like I, cause I still, my, I, I, I never stopped liking Star Wars, but I think around that time, like I had gotten like very much back into it. Cause I think they around that same time was when they just re they'd done the VHS release. That was like, yeah, 
that was know, the VHS, the or whatever it was. The Empire sort of multimedia mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. So all of that that got me big time. So I was for for a while there. I was I was pretty much getting every single figure as it came out. So you'd be uh, making that being such to the a toy aisles as soon as you'd walk into a store. Oh yeah. Like that was a thing that my friends and I did in high school. Like we would get out of school and like go to the toy store or the Walmart or whatever, and just immediately go to the toy aisle. And, and you go again, I think it, technically internet was there, but um, not what it is now. And no. so like, unless you were like reading, I don't even know if the toy magazines were this thorough, but uh, you know, it really was like walk into the store and be like, Oh my God. Yeah. They make this one now, and and yeah, so it was it was very exciting when you'd find those ones that you. Unless someone called you on your out. landline to say, "I was just at Kmart, <laughs> yeah, and I just exactly. saw some new figures in." Yep, yeah. So that that was that was a, a fun time. So I, I stuck with it for a few years, and then it just got overwhelming after and fade out a bit. And then I've kind of now I'm just like a little. Will kind of dip my toes here and there. I'll get back into it a little bit and find ones that I didn't know came out because I kind of, you know, wasn't keeping up. And sometimes I'll find those and buy them. And now I just peek at what ones are still coming out. And, you know, things like Figure and Dan will get me every time. Well, when you, because you're, you know, certainly when you were touring more frequently, you were out on the road. Is that one of the things mm-hmm. you would swing through in towns and sort of like, oh, I'll look at the shops and see if I see any Star Wars Yeah, stuff. sometimes. Yeah, uh, for sure. And that even uh, these days, it's it's definitely more of a thing too. On when I am actually on tour, not that often these days, but um, yeah, I will I will still do that. And Is I there anything you specifically recall buying while out on tour? Hmm, that's a great question. I wish I had an answer for and that. It doesn't but necessarily I don't, I, have to I, be Nothing a is coming to mind. I mean, but is there anything yeah, yeah. that you? Well, I got very much into uh, a, a different kind of of toys there for a while. They just the like uh, the the vinyl toys, like the you know the like different artists would make and everything. There were always limited, you know, like a thousand of of these, and that's it or whatever. Uh, so I got very into that stuff for a while, and uh, I actually still don't know what this officially is, but uh, it's right here. I'll grab it. I got this in. Uh, I believe Nagoya, Japan. Uh, it's just this really cool cartoony woolly mammoth guy well, that is with brilliant. one broken tusk. And I just saw it and I was like, oh, I love this thing. It's, it's, I don't know. That looks I just very ca- George of the Jungle sort of Jay Ward style. Yeah. I, I just, I just love the way it look, looked and uh, it didn't. I don't know if maybe it originally came. I don't know if I bought a loose one or if they literally kind of came like this, but it didn't. It was just in a bag, I think. And you got uh, that in Japan? Yeah. So if you're overseas on tour, that's quite a purchase to make, knowing eventually you're going to have to get that home. Yeah, that was always the hard part. But I would usually, you know, usually when we would go over there, uh, Japan's not the biggest place. So usually when we would go there, it would just be like three shows. We'd usually do... Tokyo, Osaka, and sometimes Nagoya, maybe one or two other places, but usually it was those. So and usually you were out there for a week, week and a half? If even, yeah. And we'd usually have a few days off to, you know, since we, it's like one of those things like, we're in Japan, we're going to take a couple <laughs> extra days here. Um, but yeah, whenever that would happen, I would, I would usually intentionally bring a suitcase that was too big. You know, <laughs> have just whatever I needed that not taking up case. much of that bag. Yeah, and knowing knowing that I'm gonna come home with probably a lot more than I left with, so yeah, that was the move. So what you're saying is, when you guys are out on tour, the bus comes back a lot heavier than it left. Oh yeah, for yeah, he said like records and stuff too. Yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. So, how much of the stuff when you began collecting again have you retained over the years? Like, if you had another purge. No, uh, some other things, but with Star Wars uh, figures, no, uh, I I still have all of those '90s toys, and uh, and yeah, and have like I said, dipped back in here and there, and bought even bought some new ones. But yeah, they'll still have all that, and I I have regained a lot of the original toys as well, but not not as many as I would like. But I I have eh, I don't know, maybe like thirty something of of the original line. 
Now, are you an opener days. or you were scrimshaw? Which I believe is the official term for someone who absolutely refuses for aesthetic purposes that are very valid to not open their figures. Uh, I'm I'm kind of a mix, honestly. Um, it it really depends. I'm I. It, it's funny. It's literally until a couple of years ago, all of those '90s uh, Power of the Force ones, I still had in the package, and uh, just decided one day, like, you know what? These take up like so much more room, <laughs> and I kind of like having them. Like, a, so I have some of those like glass IKEA cases that are and. Uh, so I was like, these would look a lot cooler in there and take up so much less room. And I was like, these aren't most of these aren't really worth much or anything. And I don't see myself selling them anyway. So I'm just going to open them. But uh, I am. So most of them are open these days, but I am a for packaging sometimes, like especially do the like retro. Right. Um, yeah. So they, they can get me every time with that. If you do the retro packaging, <laughs> you will you will get my money. So do you have the full retro line that they've released so far? No, uh, I pick and choose one of those things where I want to get more, but I'm just like, I, I can't, I can't open that door too far <laughs> or, you know, if I had more money to burn, maybe, but like, it's, you know, it's just, it's a little much for me these days. Yeah. That door definitely yeah. opens onto a slippery slope. Yes. Uh, yes. so what is your number four choice? Uh, so for this, a little bit cheating, um, because I don't have, because I, I, so I'm going to go with the Power of the Force version, although this was called the Power of the Force also, it's all carbonite, um, but, but more so my pick is the original from that very last chunk, which I believe was called Power of the Force, right? Yes. The ones that came with the yeah, coin? Yeah, yeah. yeah, the 90s is technically Power of the Force 2. That's right. Uh, yeah, I, I that's probably with the addition, uh, exception of the band stuff. For some reason, Han and Carbonite is like my other like big thing that I will always gravitate toward. Um, and I never had uh, the... Okay, I didn't have I had most of the figures, but I didn't have as many of the ships. And I never had Slave One. And the biggest thing that I wanted with that was the Han was and Carbonite. <laughs> and so I never got it. And I always wished that they had made that that you could just buy on its own. And so when that line came out, I was really excited about that. And uh um so yeah, I'm, like, you know, that was one of those like walk into the store, see it one day, and like, oh my god, and my mom bought it for me and it was it was the best and unfortunately that's one that was sold in that yard sale and uh bums me out because i know that's it's a little a, more expensive than three dollars yeah. or oh yeah where that's the, one that's like sometimes the dollar clearance they would get down to for those last batch of figures yeah but yeah that's a, that's a order to find one i feel like that is maybe like a, one of the like the like two or three i think most valuable ones i feel like the last looked um so those are pretty hard to find and uh i went to one day celebration this past year and uh i did see over there and i've never been so tempted for jump uh, you know that r2 droids one got me but this one uh that was the one i was really i was am i really gonna spend this much on this right now it was i walked out without it but it was it was very tempting so if you had the choice would you get a Full size Han and Carbonite or a mint on card original Han Solo and Carbonite. Ooh. Oh, that's tough. <laughs> yeah, because I think like the jumbo ones are very cool and like make like a nice thing to like hang on the wall or whatever. I think for mental reasons, I might have to go original. I think so. <laughs> but it's tough. I'm not committing to that answer, but that's that's what my gut's saying right now. You know, and right now, just to thank Rick Springfield has a mint on card. <laughs> Have you seen his collection? I I did I watch love like some because it's so absurd. It's to... uh, I I watched a video a couple years ago, and I, I had no idea that he collected that stuff. Um, yeah, so I, I've seen a little bit of it. Yeah, and that he's a major collector on the market. Like he's bought so much of the rare stuff. Oh really? Out there. Oh yeah. Like you know, and he's got his 
is Jawa in its final cape and right. Uh, but just yeah. looking at the uh, yeah, back, I he's got no just idea. a sea of of just mint. And then he goes, "Oh yeah, I bought most of these off the shelf because I liked how they looked." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Imagine. I, I can't imagine. Yeah, it's. I can imagine. Yeah, now, I, I, now I try and think of him just sitting, rearranging them. Like, what is, <laughs> right. what do you do with that? Because they're all in their loose side cases. Mm -hmm. Does he have like, you know, his dusting day? Does he have his Star Wars days where he's just like, I think today is like a Jedi Luke day. I'm going to put yeah, Jedi right. Luke here on top of the pyramid. <laughs> Yeah, I I can't remember in the video that I saw. Does he actually? Does he have like a room with everything kind of displayed? No, or is the it... video was weird. It's like he took them all out to show guests, and they're all on like a uh -huh. big dining room table. Uh huh. It's like here's just all my Star Wars figures on the dining room table for you to look at. It wasn't right. some grand collection room with you know uh, glass cases and LED lighting and right. You know right. the obligatory Millennium Falcon hung off the ceiling. <laughs> right. it, was, it was none of that uh, yeah and, and that's that's not like when you when you get that is that even that fun if you're just kind of like i'm tucked away in a closet or something like because i think that was sort of my thing opening those power of the force two for the 90s figures because i was just like yeah these have just been like, sitting in my parents all in the box like in boxes in the attic like i'm just gonna i'm just gonna actually play them yeah, I mean, I, I admire the folks that just have, you know, the room that is wallpapered with them. But then yeah. knowing that it's a collection that will never end because they keep putting new ones out, yeah. that would drive. Because, you know, you get to that point where you go, well, I've got everything exactly. Look how great it looks. Oh, wait, they just released another wave of figures. Why did they do that? Why? What am I going to do with those? Yeah, I, I will say uh, my one thing I usually won't do is the with all of those that I now have displayed in the case, like sometimes I, I will still buy one of the, but I, I kind of do a thing where like, if there's already a version of that exact character, like in that, uh, whatever they're wearing, I usually, unless it looks like amazingly good or there's something unique about it, I'll usually leave those. And like, I'll go for the characters that I hadn't seen yet or didn't have the figure of already. Right. Um, yeah, so I, I don't go for like I don't need you know ten X wing Lukes or anything like that. <laughs> Unless he looks really good. Exactly. I Unless mean, yeah, that really it is tempting nailed. sometimes with that early line because the well, the buff looking versions <laughs> don't you know those aren't the greatest. So I, I'm okay with a, a different version of those. I mean, again, I I will always admire that they managed to make both C three PO and Ewoks buff. <laughs> in that line but that yeah. was a thing they did it, that was an uh yeah that was a weird move <laughs> i have, have you ever seen anything of of like that uh whoever kind of was the main and responsible for that like talk about that at all i mean what the, i mean the just the general choices of the belief of that was what boys toys of that period was supposed to be right. and there was an expectation of that but i don't remember other lines leaning into it in such absurd ways as that certainly not with figures that represented actual human beings actors that right. were known yeah like it's one thing to do it with like he-man because who's he-man you know right. you don't associate instantly an actor with he-man uh outside I'll of speak Dolphin. for yourself <laughs> yeah I, I will acknowledge <laughs> Uh, but if you're capturing a, a He-Man look, you can you have a lot lot of leeway with how you can interpret how you want to realize that. But if it's Mark Hamill, it's like no, Mark Hamill is just like you know an an average, healthy young man, mm -hmm. not not a guy who spent a lot of hours in the gym, <laughs> and you know could have given Superman a run for his money. Yeah. So yeah, the yeah. steroidal look was a little weird. It was odd, and I like uh, yeah. Just and then they quickly, they seemed like pretty quick. They kind of started phasing that in. Yeah, it was a couple of waves, and then accurate. it's like we can't do this to Yoda. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I kind of wish they had though. A little buff Yoda. <laughs> He's not lifting those rocks with the force, man. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. so what is your number three choice? 
We're not out to uh, the middle. So is it getting difficult to assign values to this now? I I, I think I know the way I want to go here. Um, again, I feel like a lot of my choices may be technically cheating a little bit. So technically this is a set of three that came together. But if you're going to force me to just pick one, I got to go Max Rebo. I, I will allow the whole set, but I yeah. and I had an, a belief and an anticipation as oh, soon yeah. as you picked Figrin Dan mm -hmm. and mentioned why emotionally you wanted that Figrin Dan. Yeah. This would have astounded me if these did not make it onto your list. Oh yeah, and these are these are a huge memory for me too. These aren't the ones that I had as a kid, but I have have uh since regained them. I've had these for quite a while now. Um that that is one that I do uh because like I said I was five when Return of the Jedi came out and you know was getting a lot, a lot of the toys had most of them and I can still vividly remember I well I say vividly and then I'm like I think we were at a part <laughs> uh, I even you think know, I was there <laughs> yeah parts of it are vivid <laughs> uh I think we we're like at Kmart or something and being with my parents in the toy aisle and suddenly seeing this box of Mac Rebo band and I got so excited because I remember even saying before that like t saying to my parents like why don't they make the Max Rebo band and like I or I don't even know if I knew the name at that point but uh you know wanting the band like so badly. I'm like why don't they're making like toys of everything else why don't they make them <laughs> and so when I finally stumbled into them at the store that day it was it was a very exciting day uh I don't think my parents bought them for me on the spot but uh soon after but they knew at that point they knew what would be a solid purchase yeah. for you. Oh yeah. 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 yeah I, I believe if I remember right, I had a lot of, uh, as very much an indoor kid and had a lot of, uh, uh, weird, like asthma allergies, ear and eye problems as a kid and stuff. And, uh, so I, if I remember correctly, I had, I had gone to the hospital for something. And I think like, it was one of those, like, you just went through a thing here, here's the Max Rebo band. <laughs> and, <they're exciting. laughs> and the thing it taught you was to have more things. Yes. Like then we we taught him. No, this is not. This is, you can't keep rewarding him for being sick. <laughs> the uh, yeah, I remember so... I, the, my chief memory. The only memory I have of seeing a figure on the shelf, and I'm a little bit uh, slightly older than you, uh, was from the Jedi period, mm -hmm. and rounding a corner and seeing uh on the shelf and i think like a base px a carded emperor figure mm -hmm. and the two thoughts in my mind were wow i i would like that and so B, did you the mail or the mail order one well that so that's my second thought was they okay sorry they lied to us because <laughs> i thought you could only get it through mail order yeah but here is it is on this card it's like no they made people buy things Mm -hmm. to get this and now you can just get it on the shelf <laughs> yeah Is so it, but it was it was much later though wasn't it? or at least at the as, as, a, as a it felt way later but probably it was probably a month or something who knows yeah no i i think the emperor would have been like one that was announced as a mail away right after the film came out mm -hmm. and maybe towards christmas of that year it would have started appearing on cards Right. Because I know that what the preview figure was Akbar. Right. But I don't think they tipped their hand about the Emperor too much. Until Probably not. Because he may, was he one of the, I know the Ewoks were blacked out on the back on that initial release. Uh, was was maybe the Emperor was as Which well? I, I forget. I, lo I love just how sloppy the blacking out of those characters <laughs> were on the back of those cards. Yeah. Like it looked like a sharpie. It looked like yeah. someone just came around and took those cards down and sharpied out. Because yeah. Yoda was blacked out on the Empire cards, I think too. Oh, was he? I, I don't. I don't know if I realized that because I, you know, again with Jedi ones, like I can specifically remember, you know, seeing those and be like, what is what is the deal? And then learning it was the Ewoks. But yeah, yeah, because I think what there were three mail away figures for Jedi. There was Akbar, Nine Num, Nine Num, and, and uh, the Emperor. Oh, and Anakin, yeah. Anakin Skywalker. Oh, right. Yeah, also, that was... that, he was another one that would have been 
kept close to the vest until now that that was one I never got because he was a last seventeen yeah. Power of the Force two character or the Power yep. of the Force character yeah. with the coin yep. with one of the saddest looking packages you ever did see. I don't know who who did that painting. <sighs> But you oh, can hang it right, next to like right. a like a cloud painting in a seventies bathroom. It looked just that sad. It's like, oh, that's grand- that's, that's our that. grandpa Nelson. He uh, <laughs> he passed away in the forties. Yes, your grandmother painted that. <laughs> yeah, what a what an odd choice. Why did yeah. they do that? <laughs> there was a lot Where'd... of old, there was a lot of old men in that wave because they also had the imperial <laughs> dignitary was in those last seventeen. Uh, it was a lot of weird choices for a swan song for an action figure line. Still, yeah, and still so many uh, choices they could have gone with that, like... That never is there, got made. Like, I, under, I But yeah, I was going to say, I could understand why they didn't make a Tarkin figure, but if you're going to that point, you're making Imperial Dignitaries. Like, yeah, why did you not make there. a Tarkin? Yeah, because yeah, they weren't going, all Return of the Jedi. All the old white men go with, yeah. go with Tarkin in there. If you're gonna go, go out with a bang, the way yeah. Tarkin did. Yeah, yeah, they weren't just Return of the Jedi. They were they sprinkled in things from the other movies. Yeah, it was across so, yeah, was... the uh, the the saga. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, it was a very very weird weird collection of figures. Now, did yeah. you gravitate more towards the humans or the aliens? in the figures that you liked um i would say figures aliens or troops i'll put it that way um probably more so the aliens but it's pretty cool with humans and aliens like it just kind of just definitely depended uh on on the specific one but uh yeah definitely again Jabba's palace being such a big thing for me, like definitely was always into all those aliens and everything. Yeah. So you very excited that, uh, speaking of your number three choice, that uh, Max was proven to still be alive post Return of the Jedi. Yes. However, I think he looked really bad. I mean, he'd been through some things. He was a couple <laughs> of years older. The road is I... hard. He's playing on a desert planet, and it doesn't look like he's a desert planet sort of denizen. Yeah. Uh, but it, it was, yeah, you're, I don't you're know. A, you're a working musician. You know. How do you think he should look? <laughs> well, if anything, if anything, I go the other way. It's like he had some work done or something. Because <laughs> <laughs> he, he looked a little, uh, also sure, would well, not he still be had his wrinkles. But... to face <laughs> aging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, again, probably to partially, uh, we'd never really seen him in bright light before, which we've learned over the years really makes a difference. Yeah, yeah, and he's a yeah. very, very blue character. Yeah, yeah. It just it just looked like even just the, even, I just, I, I felt like there was something about it that just looked to me. Maybe he's finally moisturizing. <laughs> Let's hope so. And you must have been happy you finally got a drummer. Yeah. That uh and I kind of recently I uh are you familiar with I, I covered this on my Bizarre Albums podcast. Uh are you familiar with a world Empire Jazz by Ron Carter? No. I wasn't until recently either. It was this this jazz bassist put out this record, I believe in nineteen eighty, if I remember right. Um my research tends to leave my brain once the episode's done. <laughs> That's why the episodes exist. So you don't have yes. to retain it. <laughs> uh, but on the, so he, j- he like jazz interpretations of music, from Star Wars. Um, and the, has a band that made up of Star Wars characters. And the drummer is R2. And he's got like all the little like arms coming out of him. Like was on <laughs> This drummer, and so I kind of wondered if maybe that was a knot because they they seem to do a lot of those deep cut references, and I wondered if possibly that was a nod to that record. Well, putting the question out, have you asked Pablo Hidalgo? I, I've ne- I've never uh, never spoken to the man. Well, that's why his Twitter account exists. I'm sure he'd disagree with that, but that's why his Twitter <laughs> account exists. <laughs> right. Reach out and specifically because now I need to know the answer to that too. Yeah, not not a bad idea. Yeah, or get our I, pals Joseph Scrimshaw and uh, Ken Knapsack to do their one of their data bank dives. Yeah, into yeah, that drummer character. 
I would like to know. Because, yeah, it's kind of a, it seems to be a record not a lot of people know about. And I, I'm not much of a jazz guy, but I, I think Ron Carter was like a pretty legendary bassist from what I understand. And I think, and apparently this is like a record like he kind of didn't even really talk about much ever in interviews or anything. Seems like it just sort of came out and then he moved on. Um, so, like there was yeah, someone seems... like, you got to do something with his Star Wars. <laughs> Yeah, it seems <laughs> that way. Yeah, you do jazz. There's Star Wars. <laughs> do something that's Star Wars. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we can put them out now. I got, yeah. I got an artist who can put like a jazzy R two on there. He plays the drums. <laughs> <laughs> that's how executives talk, right? Even cantors. Oh yeah, executives, right? Yeah, Pretty absolutely. Solid impression. Absolutely. If I close uh, my eyes, I would feel like the old days. Well, how would you? <laughs> How would you rank the music, the songs we've heard in the Star Wars universe? Um, you know, as much as I love the Jabba's Palace scene, I, I do think I have to go with the 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 figuring the the main. I forget the actual title of it. The the canteen, you know, the, the main canteen. Yeah, one that we've all know. Yeah, like that. Not the sort of sort of more mellow one. That dun 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 dun. Dun, 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 that one because that was their other jam uh -huh. right yeah 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 uh so yeah i think that's number one um you know i and i am uh i am extremely 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 anti-jedi rocks <laughs> give me lopty neck all day long what is it about jedi rocks that <sighs> so what isn't it you? about it <laughs> i i just man again Jabba's Palace. I know. I keep saying it, but like it's such a thing for me, and and the band in particular was such a thing for me as a kid. Because I was, I even as a kid, I was very into that stuff. Because I was, I also in addition to Star Wars being like a thing that was just I don't remember not knowing it. That's kind of me with drums also, because my dad plays drums, and so I just grew up around it and was always playing. Um, so like I would always gravitate toward these these band characters when they would show up. Um, so like, you know, I loved Lapty Neck and I loved that whole thing. And then when did the special edition, uh, you know, it was there in the theater. You didn't know you're looking forward. I did know. I did know ahead of time. I will say, I remember knowing it. Um, <laughs> but, uh, man, I, yeah, I, I definitely didn't like it at the time, but I think it was a little more forgiving than I am now. Uh, I just so your heart has hardened over the years. Yes, toward over. toward J Rocks. Yes, I just I find they, it, they gave him a they gave a percussion section to it. I well, they could take it back. <laughs> it's <laughs> I, it's just so over the top corny. Like it just feels so out of place. With everything else in that scene, or honestly, in the whole original trilogy feels so out of place to me. Um, just I I find the song kind of corny and just the the actual it's it's almost the visuals that go along with it you know the like almost like uh, is take the takes to the camera even and just the I don't, it's just i don't know it's so it's so corny to me <laughs> and I'm, I'm very forgiving with with most star wars things i i very much tend to have the like even when i don't wars it's still star wars and i'm still gonna watch it and i'm still gonna at least kind of enjoy it but that's like the one for me that's uh so what how do you rank the ewok songs then because we've had ugh. the original and the replacement for that yeah well yeah i'm saying same i'm i'm yubbing up all the way yeah um yeah the other one is just the other one was fine like think if if uh that other one was what was there the whole time i don't think i would think twice about it um it's sort of there yeah. Um, but yeah, I would growing up, Yub Nub seems more like a a song made by those creatures in the moment, whereas <laughs> the replacement seems like an orchestral piece to accompany a montage. Yeah, yeah, like it's a bit yeah. more wallpapery, for sure. Than for sure. Yes, yeah, like I said, it gets it gets a pass for me. But yeah, if you're if you're making me if you're making me choose, which I did, Yub Nub. Yes, Yub Nub all the way. <laughs> And when are you going to do your cover version of Yep? Oh, I don't think I haven't thought about it. 
I was I was writing a bunch of Star Wars songs for a while and uh never Whatever never actually did that. Whatever happened to those? Though. Uh they still they still exist. I was doing it on a Patreon for a while, uh but uh it just I cuz I it was like kind of a challenge to myself of like forcing myself to try and write a new song every week. Right. And uh and I'm very bad at lyrics and uh I was like maybe Star Wars can be my crutch. <laughs> and so it's like, <laughs> I'll just write some kind of silly songs about Star Wars. Write about what so, you love. Yeah. What you know. Yeah. So I would just try and do a song about a different character every week. So what was but the yeah. first one you did? The first one was uh, Rito, if I believe. Pretty sure. And when was the when was this project? And how did we never talk about this? We did a I don't whole know. seventeen hour bit of a chat. How did this ever come up? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Yeah, I think around like probably 2017, 2018, something like oh, that. We did it for a while. Four times. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But there's like <laughs> over a hundred of the of varying quality. <laughs> Have you ever like performed some... any of them live? Um yes, actually. Uh a couple of times uh our our Joseph Shaw uh, had a show here uh, that he would do in Burbank that uh, I had, I think maybe twice I went and did a couple of songs, just acoustic, uh, playing acoustic guitar and singing. And then there's another uh, comedy show. I don't know if you know Jeff May at all, but he hosts a uh, comedy show that happens also in Burbank that's at a toy store called Blast from the Past. And he had me kind of uh, like almost pre-show kind of entertainment uh, before the show officially started. I played a few songs of those and uh, yeah, it was fun. It's all, it's just, I don't know. It's silly, but also so when is this happening at celebration? <laughs> that was the thing I thought about for a bit, but yeah, and, and I don't also, know. What would, how would you dress if you were going to be playing it? What character I, persona would you create? For who I think sings these? And that's the thing is I, I that's that's not me. Like I, I I think I my and by that I mean I would just have to be me. I think like I I'm Give not a big a Star like, Wars name. What do they make it like? Faxty Tonon. <laughs> well, what the the <laughs> I was trying to come up with a name for a long time of what I would call this thing, and uh, I couldn't come up with anything that I liked. And then one day it dawned on me. You know I people know me usually it's because of my band motion city soundtrack so then i called this cloud city soundtrack <laughs> did you have album art made up for this please tell me you had album art made up no for but i did i did have a discussion at one point with uh robinson our pal from star wars minute uh about possibly doing some artwork i was uh, i even at because uh, i'm also a big christmas dork so uh i was gonna try and uh because some of them were themed when I when it would get to that time of year, I would like try and you know make them Christmas themed as well. And at one point, I was like, maybe I'll just do like a digital release of uh, just the Christmas songs or something. And then I forget what happened; it all fell apart for some, <laughs> or some reason. <laughs> I mean, that we did bond on. We did bond on our mutual love of Christmas music. When was the last time you did a collection? Did you do one over the course of the the, the pandemic years? Uh, a of Christmas song? You're mixed. In... Yeah, just a mix. Um, it's been, been a, it's been a bit, honestly. Um, yeah. Well, I kind of have a uh, just kind of an ongoing uh, Christmas playlist in Spotify that you know I've had for years now. So when that time when the time comes, you know, it's <laughs> you usually it what's on. Yeah, yeah. Well, so it's it's ever growing. Yeah. When was the last time you wrote one of the Star Wars songs? It's been years at this point. That stopped in, yeah, maybe twenty eighteen or or twenty. So all no, the I... all the new content, like so, that's before Mandalorian. That's before yeah, all of the new content we've had. Yeah, there were a few. Um, definitely some of the some of the sequel movies. I did a few things, but um, yeah, no, none of the TV shows were out yet at that point. So I'm throwing down the gauntlet now <laughs> for this holiday season. Based on whatever is coming up, Mandalorian, mm -hmm. Andor, anything that's come out since 2018, we need we need a holiday song this year. We'll we'll see. That that that's been part of the other problem. If, if we're real talk, real quick, is that uh, I I know some people I've talked to also have the people that do creative things. Like I 
I have like a lot of songs that I've written, you know, at the end of the day, I'm a drummer, but I do like playing other things and writing music and everything. But I was like, oh, no, this is the pandemic. I'm like forced to just be home. You know, I had work still, thankfully, but uh, it was like, I have all this time. I can't do other things. So maybe this is finally the time I like make a record like myself just do this and just all creativity and inspiration just was all out the window yeah, and I've did still... any of us do those projects that we thought we were i don't think do? so i, I don't we don't, oh, I, don't here... I didn't even do the puzzles that i got <laughs> no, but i do every now and hear people that like did this amazing thing created this cool thing but and i'm I like think, how did I, you do that but i think those are the outliers i really yeah. do yeah i mean i the more people i talk to are just like i i got up every day i <laughs> <laughs> I watched a lot of TV. Yeah. I binged a lot of shows I otherwise wouldn't have watched. Yep. I maybe read some books. Like whatever their their relaxation thing would have been, mm -hmm. they did a lot of that. Anything that would have been like the productive thing to create something new, there was a lot less of that. Yeah. And I've just still, even though you know, I know we're still going through, but things are definitely the most normal they've been in a, in a very long time and uh i'm still still to kind of that back um, i'm hoping it eventually comes back i feel like it will but yeah it's still been a bit of a struggle like i haven't written any i literally haven't written anything in a couple of years so. well i want to hear what you'll what you'll write <laughs> right. at the very least knowing that max is back yeah that if you can't yeah. take inspiration from that yeah i did have a size noodles song and that was actually <laughs> i think you need to remind people which thankfully you have during this but even broader than this that this stuff exists is it still accessible the the patreon stuff uh no i do like i yeah i i did at one point put like a like i kind of picked my favorite like 10 or so of my favorite ones and put them on Bandcamp. i don't remember if that's still up or not i'll have to check <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how long it's been and so much attention i'm paying to it well and i would also encourage people to check out bizarre albums which is a great show uh thank you very much it has exposed me several to star wars episodes several star wars episodes uh exposure to a lot of of projects by various folks that you never would have thought uh existed or should have existed but definitely do yeah. uh fascinating stories i enjoy the research that you do they're bite size you know, they're, mm. they're easy to digest mm. episodes. And uh, I was very happy to see that one of my early recommendations to you finally came through. But the Spider-Man the... rock comic. Yes. I finally, I like stumbled into a copy of that a uh, couple of months ago and had to grab it once and I saw how it. how glorious. Yeah. Is that? Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it, it involves a, a guy that uh, comes up a lot on the show. His name is Ron Don who sang all the ones and he sang like he, he was the voice of archies you know sugar sugar and think he's like yeah, saying a really session heard. guy yeah yep uh, yeah he, that has all those certain, a, a, like a slick just like a slick voice if you want a slick voice that can hit all those pop beats mm -hmm. you get him uh yeah but uh everyone should check that out check out the episode and learn that it is such a groove to be free uh, so let's go to your number two choice on your list. So now you do have to decide yeah, what is eventually going to be your number one. We got this. Come up a few times today. Uh, well, I'm going to start you yeah, with the visual here. Oh, Stormtrooper. No. We got the Luke Power oh. of the Force original. And this is mine. This this is another one that survived, and again, this is one of the like like top two or three hardest ones to find. I understand. I don't have the uh, blaster or anything, but you still have the helmet. Um, yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, it's really the of the two things you could still retain. That's the more important one because that re retains the Luke Skywalker in disguise. Yes. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was a very exciting thing for me. When packing up things to uh, to move to Virginia, and one day I'm going, and at the bottom of this drawer, there's Luke in stormtrooper costume and uh, costume uniform, whatever. You <laughs> uh, 
and uh yeah i was very good when i found that and uh so yeah that still holds a uh it holds a special place for me because I, I was always a sucker too for just the the ones with the removable masks like boosh uh came close to making my list um lando the lando's gift guard as well um all those all the uh, all the removable mask figures i was always into now were you good at keeping accessories in general and taking <sighs> care of your figures kind of because i i think my my mom was very good uh kind of helping with that and i had i definitely had the like darth vader carrying and i think like put things in the right places often um but again you know i was five years old so who knows <laughs> i don't even really <laughs> remember for sure i, mean, I know i definitely still have that helmet them. is a good sign yeah that, that you were decent about it right yeah I think, I think, yeah, I was in the ballpark, in the ballpark, you know, right. But, um, yeah, that was, uh, uh, another, very, and also, uh, you know, before, oh, you know, you had, uh, uh, sent me make, to make sure I'd like caught, uh, checked out the show that you and I, and I watched a bit of the, uh, episode you did with Hal Lublin. And, uh, I believe, you guys were forgetting about this. I remember how many Luke figures were in that original line because Hal said, "Oh, they made Han, but they didn't make Luke." Other, yeah, he definitely forgot. Yeah, I'm gonna say just he forgot. <laughs> you didn't, or you were just being a gentleman host and not yes, correcting no, him. I was, yeah, I wasn't gonna do that. I mean, that would be rude. <laughs> Why would I do that? I knew. Yeah, man, good man. I'm going into a Martin Short character now. Of course I do. Of course, of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then and then that was that was exciting for me then too when the when the uh the 90s figures and that was like one of the maybe the first mail away figure was the han storm uh, Kellogg's, i believe yeah right yes um so yeah and then it, it took a while before they finally made a luke one um but uh yeah i was uh yeah give me give me i don't know why the removal mask was such a big deal to me at the time but uh yeah sucker for them now how many how do you display your figures now how does your collection sort of where do you keep it now i have a couple of uh not in this room but uh my other room uh i have like a few like glass cases that i have them all kind of displayed in there i have one that has all 90 stuff and then another one that um my smaller collection of uh original years are in there amongst some other things but yeah that that collection unfortunately not as impressive as uh but one day yeah, one day we'll when we all commit to that heist <laughs> yes. or springfield yep and i finally get my han and carbonite again <laughs> when rick looks at you and goes betrayed by a musician is this how it ends <laughs> so what is your number one choice then well and was this number one by like a country mile or was this a tight race? I, I'm not going to go a country mile, but let's go a, a country the quarter mile. <laughs> <laughs> a country hop. Yeah. And uh, you probably can see this come, but uh, again, a little bit more of a cheat kind of because it is a figure, but it's a big figure. And uh, yeah, got to go the original because uh, this was another one that was very exciting for me. Uh, very ex excited when this came out. I also kind of had her salacious crumb was very excited that he came with him. Uh, I think it was salacious crumb. Um, and uh, yeah, just to uh, turn the head, the tail moves. Come on. All this stuff. Uh, yeah. Uh, lots of lots of fond memories with this. Like this is do remember having a lot of and uh i remember my mom or my grandmother little uh probably something like you would find at michael's now or something but like these very tiny little miniature frog toys that they got for me then so that i could put inside <laughs> the uh, uh that was that was fun and uh yeah. I, I'm assuming that's not your childhood Java. It's not my childhood Java, but it's another one I have uh, have regained. Is, uh, yeah, I, I 
actually, I see behind you, you have, uh, I guess like the, like the 2004 well, Java, the I think. the Black Series. Oh, Java. it's the Black Series one. Okay. Gotcha. With the... Uh, ah, the yes. Okay. Articulate, yeah. Nice. With the mechanism, I don't like messing around with too much because it seems like it's going to break one day. But yes, he's right. a great... Yeah, that's that looks great. Yeah, because there are some newer ones. It's it's always a little all over the place with Java figures. I feel like look, some of them like look I great. Knew what you were gonna do? Because there's the Black Series. Right. Yeah, I feel that the Java toys are all, all over. Excuse me, all over the place. Some of them look really great, and some of them not He's so a much. Hard character, I think, to really nail. Yeah. Because there's a lot of nuance, I think, being the, you know, that sort of uh, hand sculpted and realized in latex that he's yeah. much like a human face. Like there is like a narrow margin of where he looks right. Right. And where he looks off, because I think we recognize like we would a human face. The ways that that thing was presented on screen that don't right. seem right if we see him in product form. Yeah. Slightly. Yeah. Off. And the, and the original line, like, always gets a pass from me because it's just, you know, again, it's my childhood, but then also, like, they all looked... It was just how toys were back then. Like, they didn't look the greatest. But that sculpt is it's, one it's, of the best yeah, that they did. I mean, that, the sure. stuff they were doing towards the end of that line looks a lot better than the stuff that they did yeah. at the beginning of that line. For sure. For sure. And, uh, yeah, that's... And, and I do have a... Uh, it's, like, the only kind of most of the figures that I have displayed are just, like I said, in that case, but I do have on a separate shelf. I kind of, uh, it was the one thing I got extra nerdy about and kind of have made a bit of a Jabba's palace, uh, set up there where I got that, the, uh, the Jabba's palace thing that came out a couple of years ago and the vintage packaging that's the, that comes yeah, with the, the very weird sort of, uh, uh, Han alcove. Yes. Lisa. With the Tauntaun head and the, yeah. Um, <laughs> so I, I had to get that. So I have that and I have the old, the, the like di cardboard diorama thing from the nineties. I kind of put those all together and I, I, I have, it's all nineties um, and two thousands figures in there, but uh, I have my original Jabba. The, I, I don't have a, a more recent Jabba. I did have one, but I gave it to my niece years ago and now I kind of wish. <laughs> <laughs> If you borderline like, if you don't still want that, if you can kind of, yeah, I have. But the thing, because <laughs> she's she's a little older now, and I don't think she does about having it. And my sister actually tried to find it and then couldn't find it. Oh, so which is the so, with like a dagger? It's like really, yeah. yeah. I would have so, protected that with my life. Yeah. So who knows? Um, but I would I would like to get a, a more recent one that looks a little better that would fit in with all of that a little more. Um, Did you order the the new? Uh... Jabba's Palace set that's coming out, the throne room, the actual throne room set, the the book of Boba Fett one. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, which is easily transformable into. Right, I did not. Uh, that I saw it. It looks very cool, but yeah, I did not get it. It's it's fairly pricey, if I remember right. Also, yeah, I mean, and everything is kind no. of on the pricey the, side. The one that I I caught late. I, it came out at a bad time anyway. I wouldn't have been able to do it, and now they go for way too much. But I, I would, I would the kill for barge. that sale barge. Yeah, <laughs> I want it. So bad. <laughs> it you literally know, goes for like thousands of dollars now. I was just talking with someone about that and the Hasbro, uh, the Haslab stuff. Uh huh. It's like the the molds exist now. Now the thing's been realized. You have the tooling. You have the ability to create these things. Yeah why not continue to make them and sell right. them have there were things that were included with that sale barge that can remain exclusive like it had a a packaged exclusive yak face right in there with the coin yeah. don't reproduce those let those mm -hmm. remain exclusive for the people that got it but yeah if there are still people that want it and it's going for 2500 in the aftermarket mm -hmm. make more like the razor crest yeah. Have the figures that came with it be an exclusive, but allow people to get the ship again. Because now the heavy lifting of the tooling is done. Yeah. Like, even if it has to be like a threshold of production of to say, well, we need 2,000 orders to justify doing another run. Well, mm -hmm. then open it up and see if you get 2,000 orders. And if it does, right. do another run of the thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, yeah that I would. I would. Uh, 
I would I, you know I would probably act on it this time. Yeah. If you they know, did it. Do you know where you'd put it if you got it? <laughs> no, I, I, I have this I'm not gonna say <laughs> fantasy's way too strong of a word. <laughs> but <laughs> But it's the first one that came to mind, so it's gonna stick. <laughs> but I do like uh yeah, just kind of like having some kind of like whole like Jabba Nook. Yeah. You know, have have the palace thing like I already have. I have the state barge nearby, and um, you know, uh, the skiff, uh, the skiff, and all that. Uh, you know, they've of course never really. Has there even an attempt at any sort of Sarlacc toy? Like a Sarlacc playset? No. Yeah, I don't think it's surprising well, they haven't at least back in the day to have like a hand puppet. Yeah, like Power of the Force too. There couldn't have been a hand puppet Sarlacc pit with the beak and everything. Right. Just yeah. I still prefer beakless, but uh, I would accept beak. Um, but yeah, that was that was a thing I, I did as a kid. It was I had a, a sandbox, and I my grandparents lived in Florida because they were grandparents, and uh, they would sometimes send packages to us, and uh, they would send shark's teeth sometimes. And I used to dig a hole in my sandbox and line it with shark's teeth and uh, you know, back there. I mean, to be fair, if you're going to do a DIY project, there are harder ones than realizing an old school Sarlacc pit. Yeah. Yeah. Because you basically True. just need a bunch of pokey teeth and yeah. some tendrils and a hole. Mm hmm. Yeah. For so, sure. uh, Norm Chan. If you're out there listening, uh, Adam Savage, let's get together. Let's get a one day build of a Sarlacc pit. Bring it is Tony just... up, make a Sarlacc pit with him. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, it is surprising though. It's it's kind of like main things. I feel like they've never done some sort of toy. Like I I can kind of understand because like how would you like? I I don't know. Like it seems both doable and weird at the same time. But it seems after you know. They make figures for everything, so it's surprising they haven't done that at some point. Or even a mat. Like, why wasn't there a play mat? Like, remember when they used yeah. to do, like, printed play mats that were just, like, mm -hmm. a flat picture of a thing? Right. Sarlacc like, Pit's perfect for a play mat. Yeah. And then you just poke a hole in the center of it and, and dig a hole, and then you got yep. your Sarlacc like, Pit. Yeah. They're blowing it. So I think uh, what I'm saying is the Kickstarter that we're getting together is the Sarlacc like, Pit play mat. I think and we can come. get our backers for it. Just yeah, nice maybe. heavy duty yoga mat of <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the next version of the uh the kind of the sail barge just uh that's the that's the new that's version the that, that it's that and it? then it comes with a sarlacc with a sarlacc play mat yes <laughs> <laughs> i'd back it i'm yeah, in so would i <laughs> <laughs> so when what are your holy grails like what are the things that if you could get them to make them today Oh, things just that don't you, exist that you just want. for me. Uh, boy, I mean, the start like would definitely be up there. Um, just for that's that's what's so that's what's so crazy. Like I'm saying, is that there's not much they haven't made. So like, it's hard to even think of of much. Um, boy. What a question. Or a new what, updated what a, version what, or something. Like, you know, what do you, is there anything that you would just. Um, I wouldn't mind a, uh, you know, sculpt, you know, all of the other, but like a more modern toy looking version of the Mac. But like, but the original, like just the three. <laughs> you, you don't want and, any of the Jedi rocks band. You no. just want. Get your Joe Yowza out of here. <laughs> Although technically it is in Jabba's Palace, like, or at least the, the same creature. What's the, Finally the name of the guitar player? What's the, Ooh, the, the, I, the frog guitar player? I don't remember. I know that I, did, I definitely knew at some point, and I do have that somewhere because the, they did those like a two packs. Slash harmonium? The, what is that thing yeah, that he's playing? I don't know. Uh, it's some speed up thing. Um, he had a nice chair. He looked comfy. <laughs> yes good for him <laughs> yeah anyone who gets a nice seat in the palace good for them yeah listen why can't you just appreciate that jedi rocks gave an opportunity for more musicians to get a solid gig <laughs> should that be something I... you should celebrate 
It should, it should. But you know, it's, 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 you know, it's not like I like every musician and every song I ever hear, you know, <laughs> you gotta have some, some choices in there. I mean, but just support the gigging. You don't have to support the, you know, the, the, the work itself. That's fair. That's fair. I'm just not going to, uh, and to I'm know that gonna... they were out of a job right after that, like the entire yeah. band didn't make it onto the barge. A yeah. lot of them were oh, left yeah. behind. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Uh, that I'd never really thought about the fact that, uh, yeah, we saw the, them in the, Jedi Rocks, but we're back to the core band. Yeah, I never thought about march. that. I never thought about that. So do you think yeah. they're back there waiting? Well, you know, we got to wait for the rest to get back to go to our next gig, and so the rest <laughs> of the band doesn't come back. <laughs> you there? I'm, there's, I'm sure there's some sort of expanded universe that involves that why they're not there or something i mean why we don't get more exploration in the expanded universe of the entertainment side of the galaxy like yeah. the musicians or or what what is the what's the comedy scene like in the star wars <laughs> galaxy <laughs> right. we, why haven't we explored that is there no yeah. stand-up comedians oh that's i feel like there's it's just a matter of time until that happens on one of the tv shows did someone come in and do like a set before the musicians came in at Jabba's Palace, does he have a favorite comedian? Yeah, I uh, yeah. I you know, just... there's someone over in a corner doing a podcast in Jabba's Palace. Do you know that's <laughs> happening? <laughs> yes. Uh, a man of men's over in the corner doing his TikToks. Yeah, who are the who are the two most likely Jabba's Palace denizens <laughs> to have a podcast? Who would you pick? Oh man, just because. Uh... I, well, I, I'm just gonna stick with Amanaman because I want to. I want to hear what he's gonna sound like. I think that's. I, I'm strictly basing this on. I want to hear what they would sound. Like. I'm going him, and I'm going uh... Gilbert Gottfried, right? Amanaman is Gilbert Gottfried, <laughs> <laughs> and maybe like a uh... oh, what's his name? Uh, Jaquil? Is that who? Is? <laughs> or like an Eatman, or uh, one of those guys? One of the one of the more ridiculous background characters. That's who. I, that's who I want to hear. I want to hear parenting tips from Malakili and Wolf. Wolf is his friend, right? Isn't that like the the one who consoles him? I think him at so. The end? Yes, yes. I want that. I'm like, well, this is how you brush their teeth. <laughs> you uh, you got to you know give them a little treat. And then, you know, I love I love my rancor. You love your rancors. Hit that like button. <laughs> I was I uh, on that note. The rancor almost made my list. It was it was almost getting there. Did you have the rancor as a kid? I do. Yeah, I, I, I still. I, again, not, not, not my original, but I do, I do have one. Yeah. That was, a, that was another favorite. That I was uh, another big moment. That being very excited when stumbled that at the store, finding out that they made it. Yeah. So, how long after the purge of your toys at the yard sale did you regret that you? Oh, it wasn't them? long. It was like maybe a year. Did it maybe. ever go through your mind like there are still kids in this neighborhood? that have my toy. <laughs> I did. I liked, yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't know who the kid was like, cause it was, I remember thinking at the time, cause I think the kid was actually a little bit older than me. And I remember, um, like, I think if I remember right, his mom had come to the yard sale without him and then said, Oh, my son collects these, get him. And then he came back and literally bought all of them. And his eyes uh, just lit up. <laughs> And you're like, ka-ching. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, little like nine or ten-year-old me is like, oh, my God, I'm going to, you know, make bucks or whatever it was. <laughs> so we'll eat pizza tonight. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was exciting at the time for me, but very quickly regrettable. So there's a solid chance that somewhere out there that now adult collector has your original Star Wars collection. I'm like, mm -hmm. I remember I bought all these at a yard sale, 10 bucks. Fringe. And this is like the core of my collection. Mm hmm. And it was like, I'm not kidding. I had almost all of them. Not, not as many, not nearly as many ships, but I had almost every figure. So he's like, I, you know, I have this one droid figure, but I don't have his coin, but I have this coin for another one. I don't have the figure. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's very, <laughs> it's very annoying. I don't know how these things were separated. <laughs> <laughs> and I have the Luke and Stormtrooper disguise as Blaster. <laughs> 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 so if you were to really commit yourself to mm -hmm. rebuilding the collection, 
what would be the first thing that you'd go on eBay and and get? Uh, if well, again, of if the we're, things if we're, you if, haven't yet, yeah, and and if like my object, I'm I'm going that hard on and carbonite. Um, loose or on card, I'm cool either way. Uh, but yeah, I think that's that's number one with a bullet for me. Yeah. So what this really is is letting all of your friends and family know that <laughs> if they ever want to give the perfect gift, that would be a lovely surprise at any time. Yeah. That Han and Carbonite from the original Kenner line would make. Yeah. Or I'll I'll accept the jumbo too. <laughs> <laughs> But you kind of would really love that classic Kenner. Yeah. Yeah. That's how you make uh, a young Tony shortly after that yard sale a very happy boy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have any honorary mentions that didn't make it onto the list? Uh, there's definitely a lot. Like I said, Rancor is definitely one of them. Uh I almost, I almost did an original uh, Gamorrean Guard, uh, just because I've always been a fan of those, and that that's another one that's like has a specific memory for me. It's like not really that big of a deal, but it was at the time because I remember literally being in a, a Sears with my mom, which that's funny to think about too. The Sears <laughs> having a toy department, uh, and uh, it was a rare day that uh, I got was able to get two figures in one day, and I got the Jedi Luke. And a Gamorrean guard on the so same day. You got day. an and instant that was a... confrontation. You yeah. can instantly set yeah, up a that scene. Was... Yes, that was the only. Uh, that's the only time I remember uh, getting uh, two in one day. Did you have Java uh, by then already? I don't think so, because I think this was pre. If my memory is correct, I think this was pretty early on. Like Jedi had not been out for very long at this point. Like I maybe hadn't even seen it yet. Um. But so all you knew uh, was Luke and Monster. Yeah, pretty much. And uh yeah, and then yeah, same thing like Boosh, like was a, a close runner up for me too. Um again, those those masks. And uh, also uh the uh the Royal Guard, the Imperial Royal Guards. Big fan of that uh uh I just find them creepy. And I just think it's a really it's the cool one arm design. exposed, I, I like one those. arm not exposed kind of thing. Yeah. The fact that they only uh, yeah, were showing that one arm at one time always seemed a bit yeah sort of iconic and memorable. Yeah, and they're just I feel like they're they're just creepy looking and they like I always thought like if you like imagined a horror movie, like imagine like someone looking out their window at night and one of those is just standing in the dark in their yard, like it would be pretty creepy. Yeah, well, he's very monolithic. <laughs> but he is someone you can sort of tap yeah. on the shoulder and go to the other shoulder and avoid detection from them really easily. Yeah. Yeah. There's zero Yeah, logistically range. they don't seem great, but uh they look cool. Uh do you have an emperor in your collection? Do you have an imperial guard? I do. Yes, I have I have both. I and of of the and 90s and uh original line. My my guard though of my original guard that I regains. I got it for a little ever like uh they cut some of the robe off so like both of his arms are out <laughs> so, oh, so it really it looks... bothered them that they did not have... yes yeah <laughs> so I, like i said i got it for very cheap and i was like ah whatever i'll, I'll why not because I, I didn't have one so like i'll take i'll take a a uh ruined one for now <laughs> i'll eventually get a better one but yeah <laughs> well i hope for both of our sakes that we get a uh, a sail barge back out there yes uh, yes. So Hasbro, please. listen up, because they pay attention to us. Uh, <laughs> for the, uh, I had a couple of things that I got recently, so I'll mention it in the show real quick, mm -hmm. uh, just because I like to share things that I should not have bought but did. Uh, and so I've been looking for this one for a while, because it turns out these were hard to find uh, towards the end of the releases of Rogue One for the action figure line. I got an Admiral Radis. Nice. figure which speaking of return of the jedi it's it's great to see amon calamari have a prominent role past then and in my mind i keep hearing admiral radish yeah and then i think of fraggle rock and it makes me happy so <laughs> i'm glad i got this admiral radish with his uh he has never seen in a film extraneous weapon that's right 
never going to get used in a display at all. Yep. Uh, but that yeah, that great. was always a a funny move. I feel like with with the old toys and the new toys, oh, it was like oh, so many two was ridiculous yeah. for the inclusion. <laughs> like Harkin always had coming to have some... with like two guns. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Weird like, move, did, but did I you, get it. But yeah. Did you watch the movie? <laughs> I like when they they did a whole thing where they came with these big rigs. Like Han did, Luke did, like oh, the yeah, deluxe yeah, figure yeah. that had these huge backpacks they were supposed to carry around. Yeah, I never, never, never cared about those. Never got those with, with their full weapon system. Uh, yeah. The other one is uh, Star Wars adjacent, but uh, I had never, I had gotten the first two waves of these with the first two films, but I got a Doctor Henry mm. Jones from the 2008 releases of the uh, three and three quarter inch Indiana Jones line. Nice. With his little diary. Mm hmm. Uh, and uh, of course, his umbrella. And his, he's the most buttoned down action figure. You can, he comes <laughs> with a book. Right. The fact that you can get an action figure that comes with a book doesn't come with anything else, doesn't come with a horse to ride. He's just got <laughs> his book, he's got his bag, he's got an umbrella if it rains. You know, I mean, with those birds in the sky. Yeah. He's set. Uh, but this entire wave, I need to eventually locate. You got the Grail Knight. You got the Young Indy. You got the German officer whose name I always forget. Colonel Vogel. Do we ever hear his name in it? The German officer, the tank officer. Not that I'm aware of. Yeah, not that I'm aware of. And Elsa. Which you can remember just with the line, let it go, Elsa. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> I was very happy to find both of those uh nice almost as happy uh as i am to have finally had you on the show ah oh, thank you it was, uh, a pleasure to do sorry it took so long to get this to actually finally happen I mean, but it's a good uh thing. happy to you, do you it we're out there you were performing again that was that's a good thing yeah 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 it was it was it was good but uh i was glad we finally made this happen uh, and i had a great time and hopefully what comes out of this is that we both get a katana Yes. And uh, you get your Han and Carbonite mm -hmm. from someone who truly cares about you. So this is now a litmus test for a lot of relationships <laughs> in your life as to who will be the first one to get you a Han Solo and Carbonite. Yes, because once I get those things, I will just I'll live happily ever after. Will it be an awkward holiday season if suddenly you have like dozens of Han and Carbonites? <laughs> No, I think that sounds like the best holiday season. <laughs> Would you have just a Han and Carbonite display? Hans and Carbonite. Is that the plural? I, would, I, 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 uh, that has been a thing where I, I haven't done that. I, I do have a few different versions of it, but kind of has been a thing. I was like, do I just need like all the different ones that they've made? Like, cause like I said before, I was like, oh, I, if I have one, I don't need others. But like, that's one where I'm like, eh, I, I could maybe get all the different versions of that. Yeah. Yeah. That's not too extreme. Yeah. I think the things that are too hard to hunt down at this point. Yeah. Other than the original one. Right. So, yeah. yeah. And then eventually you need to get someone to sculpt you in carbonite. And Don't think I haven't thought about piece, it. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, really, all they need to do is swap out the face. Then that's yeah. good enough, right? I think that was a thing that was being offered at Disney World at one point. I think it was like a short-lived thing, like in, in uh, but I remember Edge reading about or... this being a. Th no, this is like pre. This was years ago. Uh, maybe it wasn't Disney World, but there was uh, like a limited thing where that was being offered. Um, but it wasn't. I don't think you could do it through the internet. And you thought about it, right? Oh, I definitely like wanted to do You're it. Like, but guys, yeah, can we was... like add a few dates onto the tour? Yeah, can we? exactly. <laughs> the thing that I really need, and can one of those dates be in Orlando? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's. that's got it coming because it seems like more of a thing now of like you can get like custom but with figures 3D printing, made of yourself yeah i can't so it's, imagine it's come that it's you coming. can't say hey uh who, who wants to take a commission of sculpting me for a me and carbonite yeah. figure yeah it's uh, coming it's the centerpiece of your display and speaking of java and i know you love java's denizens i don't know if you saw the episode i did with uh the uh, the host of the YouTube channel Mighty Java's Collection. Did you see that episode? I know that I I did not see that episode, but I have watched that channel before. Yeah, which is for a Java and Return of the Jedi lover. It is a yeah. a rabbit hole to go down. So as a lover of Java and uh, uh, just Java in general, yeah, I think you will enjoy that episode. I yeah, I'll have to I'll have to seek that one out now. Yeah, 
And for sure. also between the two of us, we're going to have to also print out a life-size job of the hut like he did. <laughs> wow. I didn't know he's done a life-size. Wow. If you if you want a lovely thing to watch after we're done talking, uh, look at the multi-part series of where he decided with his 3D printers to try printing out a life-size job of the hut. Wow. And and the journey that went on. Yeah. And also, I'll say it, and he printed it in his basement. Uh-huh. So I will leave leave you with your mind <laughs> filling in the details on that. So where I will definitely look this up. Where should people find you on the internet? What should they follow? What what do you want them to know about? Uh just um Twitter and Instagram at Tony Thaxton. Bizarre albums is my podcast. That's every Tuesday, as you said. It's like they're short 15, 20 minute episodes. Um if you like just like just full of like lots of pop culture fun fact kind of stuff. Um, just celebrities made or fictional characters, all of that. Those come out every Tuesday, uh, wherever you get podcasts. And then, yeah, Motion City Soundtracks, my band, although not really a thing going on for a while, I think. I also have a band called Don't Stop or We'll Die. Uh, there's some more stuff going on with that. But uh, yeah, and I'm also the, the Allison Rosen is your new best friend podcast. Um, yeah, I do a bunch of things. So I got what you yeah, want. Keep, don't check it out. Busy, I don't care. Man. You keep busy. Everyone <laughs> should check all those things out and hopefully well, be able you. to check out because you're going to be checking a Bandcamp link in a few minutes and see, <laughs> <laughs> and see if anybody can find those Star Wars songs <laughs> that you did yes. out on the internet. Uh, and I will mention real quick before uh, we go that I have a book coming out. I need to remind people uh, that I hope they pre-ordered it or are going to The Art of DuckTales big nice hardcover uh, nice. collector's book from dark horse books this is the standard edition which is great I, I, this is super this is a lovely edition but i recommend uh anyone who can get the oh i gotta gird myself with this this is heavier uh the deluxe edition because oh. not only does it come with the exact same version you'll get in the standard edition but with gilded edges you know because fancy uh-huh. uh but I did over 100 hours of interviews for this oh, with wow. the crew and the cast, folks like uh, David Tennant and Padgett Brewster and Mark Evan Jackson and Paul F. Tompkins and John Hodgman and Danny Pudi and Kate Micucci and Bobby Moynihan and Lynn manuel Miranda. Uh, so the unexpurgated interviews and additional nice. artwork are all in the deluxe edition and i don't know how long that will be available so pre-order it now you also get a reproduction of scrooge's number one dime that comes in that nice go to bit.ly slash ducktales book and if you go to bit.ly slash duck art i have a limited edition art print slash book plate that people can get to stick in their copies of the book that celebrates the 75th anniversary of Scrooge, the 35th anniversary of the original DuckTales, and the 5th anniversary of the new DuckTales. So, Very nice. There's all that. Congrats, Patreon. that's exciting. Com slash Ken Plume if they want to support it. And what do, what do YouTube people say? Like, 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 and subscribe? Yeah. And don't forget to let let, it, let us know what you think in the comments. Yeah. Let us know. <laughs> Uh, let me know. I don't think Tony's going to be back and looking at that at this point. Uh, but go <laughs> do follow everything that Tony does, uh, because it's all wonderful and amazing. And uh, thank you. Can't wait to see what you do next. And if everyone has seen this, they all know I have trouble saying goodbye and ending these things. So <laughs> I'm going to say goodbye. 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 Wow, we did it together. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>